Welcome back to the channel and to the Lake District. Today we're going to go up St Sunday's Crag and we are in the Eastern Fells today. So let's have a look at it on the map. We start today's walk at the Pathdale Hotel, then head down the road towards Glen Ridding. Turning off, we walk along the valley floor. It's a gentle walk of around four kilometres and gives us a chance to get warmed up, ready for the ascent. When we reach the climb, we head up past the waterfall and Ruthwaite Lodge. Carrying on, we reach the Brothers Party Stone. Turning at Grisdale Town, we head up the side of St Sunday Crag before joining the main path to the summit. From here, we nip across to Gavel Pike, then cross back over to St Sunday's Crag. We join the main path again, and it's a steady down and up to the summit of Berks. From here, we then head right and make our way to Arneson Crag. We head down again and find ourselves at the Pathday Hotel. From the Pope of Watts was Glen Ridding, and then we'll turn off into the Fells. You're going to go past St Patrick's Church, and that is just here. So go past the Mountain Rescue Centre, which is just behind me, and then you're at this. You can obviously park here as well, so it's, again, it's five quid. Up to the Pastel King George playing fields. But I just want to finish at the hotel to get a bit of refreshments before we go back. I just passed, that's where I went uh, from. Last time I went up Hell Ellen, so it's a bit of a quiet to start. But you'll come to this, a bit of a junction, and you're heading this way, as if you're going to Hell Ellen there, Blysdale Town. As you're coming through this bit, this at the side is Grisdale Beck, and this is what's referred to as Waterfall Woods. So, <laughs> a little bit of a view to start off the walk. We're on this road for a little while going up, but it does give us a steady incline, and it's also a very firm path, so there it is behind me. Essentially a single track road, but yeah, you've got the uh, Beck accompanying you there at the side. We come to this path, we're not going through here today, but you can go up to Burks that way and make a short loop of it at the top and come back down. But for us today, a bit of a bigger one. If you want to go up towards Helvellyn, then that's kind of the route up. There's a little path you can follow up at the side there, the track you up. Then you come out near the uh, gap in the wall. What we're doing today, we're going to go to the end of here, work our way up and then across the tops. If you have a look at the Helvellyn video that's got a stride and edge in, then I started pretty much at the same point then uh, and headed up that path. But yeah, the valley going down here, it's dead pathy, but it uh, gives you a good start off. So when I was doing the Langdale Pikes, again, I've got a similar situation where you go from Old Dungeon Gill, start working your way down, and then get your legs warmed up, they can start to pop up and get some height. On this first section you are essentially walking the valley floor, uh, so it is pretty flat and pretty straight. The ground's really good, you can see the path there behind me, and you've got Grisdale Beck accompanying you at the side all the time. So, although it is quite long, so you start the ascent, it uh, gets you into the zone of the day, gets you looking at the fells, that's what I'm walking towards all the time, so fantastic view there. When we get up to the town at the top, we'll be near to Dolly Wagon on this side, and then you can take that walk over to Helvellyn if you want to from there. But today, we're on this side, St so Sunday's Crag and Burks, and then back down. Coming up to Elm Howe now. Elm Howe now. Uh, <laughs> I'm coming up to Elm Howe, and that is a uh, boarding place, so you can stay there. And I'll position you close to St Sunday's Crag. Fairfield Horseshoe on that side. 
and Helvellyn over this side, so quite a bit of walking to do around here. Although it's quite a long walk across the valley floor, this is what you're looking at all the time, so <laughs> it's a bit of expectation coming up as we get towards the bells. Worth mentioning, you are also like gradually gaining a bit of height as you do this. So, <laughs> although I've got a massive up to do in a little bit, you've already done a little bit and got your legs used to it. Just also worth mentioning, I have seen absolutely nobody on this route. So, I thought it'd be quiet today. And, uh, <laughs> and it is, and as I say, on the other side, when we get towards Helvellyn, over that side, that is definitely gonna be busy today. There's the sign to Grisdale Town, which is where we're going. At this point, this is the walking surface, and it gradually changes from a road into this, like imperceptibly as you go along. So I'm nearly at the wood, and then we'll soon start to head up. This other side of me here is called Crossing Plantation, so use it as a bit of a marker as you're walking down. So I've done the majority of this walk now across the valley floor. Uh, just a little bit more, and then we'll be up. So you can see, I'm getting quite close to the peaks now. And we'll be going up there. Right, so we're down here, and then we'll start steep up. As we get here, we can shoot off there to Eagle Crag. Uh, but for us, it's going to be Grisdale Town, so we're continuing along the same path. At this point, I've done about 5k, I've been going for about an hour, and then I'm starting the ascent. So this is pretty uh, <laughs> brutal compared to what you've been doing. So as we're going up here, it's about 250 um, to 300 metres, so it's quite a big one. And then you're at Grisdale Town, so Bit of a steep up, a couple of stops on the way, and then we'll be at the town. That's the path up to Grisdale Town, so although it is, it's actually fairly gentle going up, you do notice you are going up, so it's a bit, uh, bit of a tester on the lungs compared to what we've been doing so far. That's the back down there, which just continues to accompany us along the ridge. Our path going up, pretty decent conservation path. Takes us to the waterfall just there, and then we'll be sort of on the side of Dolly Wagon. When I was coming up, I spent a lot of time being mesmerized by the felt in front of me, but once you're on them, don't forget to turn around because that is your valley view behind. Look at that. Just by the waterfall there, you've got this. It's the Russwaite Lodge. is at about 380 meters altitude and you're going up to about 550 so you broke the back of it once you've passed that. I've got to say though on this, although the initial walk is quite flat, it's a stunning valley as you're walking towards the end here. And then a stunning view back. So 
so still a bit to do. And then we'll be at the Brothers Parting Stone. How safe in this walk, when you're going up it, you start from the road and it gradually <laughs> gets towards uh, kind of this stuff behind me. And it's almost imperceptible the way it does it. So, nice gentle introduction to the fells. A little bit further on, we're gonna get to Grazio Pike. And when we get there, I'll show you the Brothers Parting Stone, which is uh, where Wordsworth said goodbye to his brother path all the way up is pretty stable so it's not in any way dangerous that's it looking back there so there's the valley we just come from Whoo! quite a walk and we're nearly there there you go you just see in front of us there is uh, seat sandal All right, so we just get past this massive cairn here. And there we go, Grisdale Town will meet us. There it is. Sight of the town, uh, you need to just nip off path and I've nipped off to the left because I need to just go down here because the Brothers Parting Stone isn't on the main path, but it's marked by this plaque, so. That's it, just there. This is behind me, the Brothers Parting Stone, so it's just a little bit off the path. And it's the part where Wordsworth uh, says goodbye to his brother, and Wordsworth goes back into the Lake District, and his brother goes off to America to try his luck there. So the inscription on the uh, Brothers Parting Stone here, it just says, here I parted with my dear brother, who said he was sick of me banging on about daffodils and clouds. So, good riddance off to America. I'm kidding, it doesn't. Glad I could show you that. So now onward to the Grisdale Tarn, and then we'll take a little break before heading up to Sunday's Crag. If you've got a bottle with a filter, the uh, stream behind me is your last chance really to fill up. So, I'm carrying about two litres of water today because it's quite warm and uh, I wasn't quite sure how long it'd take me I reckon about five hours but yeah it's a a bit of a climb and I was always pack a bit too much water because I don't want to run out I've done that before and it's not great so <laughs> I've got a bottle with me and then my other bottle so I'm about halfway through my water now and about halfway through the walk right that's the tarn just ahead, up here, uh, Dolly Wagon Pike is just up there, and I did a video on that a little while back, so I'll put that in the description. So let's have a look at this. You've got seat sandal there just behind, and then when we get up a bit, you'll be able to see Fairfield and the Fairfield Horseshoe area. This is the walk up from Grisdale Tarn, so Grisdale Tarn here, and then you can just work your way up there, up to Deepdale Halls, and then head up to St Sunday Crag. Right, from the tarn behind me, we're just gonna go kind of a little bit at an acute angle, back towards ourselves, once I get out of this bog. So, we came up here, up the valley. The town's just over there. And then we are now heading up that path there to the top of the St. Sunday Crag. So again, the town is at about 5.50 and we're going to the peak of St. Sunday Crag, it's about um, 8.40, so climb of about 2.90 as we head up. So a little bit less than the one we've just done but it's gonna be steeper. <laughs> what we've done is we came up the valley this way and went to the tarn just there. 
Uh, this is Dolly Wagon on this side. Then we come back a little bit, you can pick up this path. And then we are heading right up there into the fells. There is a book out there for doing the Wainwrights in 36 walks. And walk one that I did of that included all this, so it included Dolly Wagon, uh, included Helvellyn. But if you're going to try those, they are really big. They probably average about 11, 12 miles, about a thousand feet. So they're all a big day out. But yeah, I'll uh, venture a couple of those as we get further into the summer. This path going up it is steep, but it's pretty stable. It's kind of stony, you can see it behind me there. So it's pretty straightforward to get up. But yeah, it is steep. <laughs> There's the drop off. Wee! Christ, the old back just down there. And that was our walk up. If you see this walk, you might think about doing it the other way around, but the reason I haven't is because it's a sort of one hour walk along the flat. Uh, I kind of don't mind that with the expectation that I'm going to do the fells. But as a one hour flat walk, just the end of the walk, <laughs> it's probably a bit boring. If you're doing this route and coming along here, I've just taken the lower path. There is actually one that goes a little bit higher up there and you can take that. Uh, it just gets you to the peak a little bit quicker, but I'm going to do this one. You can just see wiggling away there into the distance. Just want to say thanks to uh, everyone that's subscribed to the channel. So I'm just about to get to the thousand mark. Uh, which is, I've only had this going since January, so I'm pretty happy with that. So if you uh, want to subscribe to it, because uh, you're thinking of going to the lakes or you like this kind of thing, then you can just click the thing in the corner and that'll get you subscribed. And if you've got your notifications switched on, then every, uh, every week when I do these and bring them out, you'll get the update. So you can just click on that. was asking me in the comments about solo hiking so obviously I'm doing this today it's about 16k and I did it on my own I've seen a handful of people but sometimes I really don't see anyone for ages so um, I've got no phone signal in this area and the phone signal is generally quite poor in the Lake District what I have got with me though is a radio in my bag so when I'm doing this on my own for getting trouble I've got the radio there fully charged and that's got a 15 kilometer range on it so I'll easily be able to get somebody on that. Right, so if you are going on your own, just make sure you're prepared. Uh, you know, ideally tell someone where you're going. But yeah, take a radio. I'm mentioning this because I've just had a little <laughs> slip off the path there. Uh, I wasn't videoing at the time, I was just not paying attention. So if I twisted my ankle or anything, there might not be anyone else up here today. So with a radio, you can get hold of Mountain Rescue quite easily or draw attention to yourself and then uh, that helps you to be safe on the mountain. Let's go up here, there's quite a bit of bilberry round here, that's what that is. So, town's just there. Um, the brothers parting stone was just before it where we are. So what happened with the parting is Wordsworth will have gone back to Grasmere. And if you look just behind there, you can see a bit of the green burn round there. And Grasmere's just at that side of it. And his brother would have come down here. In the distance there, that's all's water. So as we look back here, you can just see the tarn over there peeping up. So that is the trail down that I'm on now. And that's from Coffer Pike just up there. And then further over, you've got Fairfield. And then obviously Fairfield Horseshoe all around the back of that.
My next big walkout is going to be the Fairfield Horseshoe, so if you want to see what that looks like, I'll put it in the description for you. Uh, this will be out like a week or so before though, so come back to that one or subscribe if you like and you'll see it pop up when I've done it. All right, look at that though. That's the view, that's the side. Absolutely fantastic. And over to the other side. There we go, so dolly wagon. And then right in the distance there, you can just see Helvellyn and the flatty bit going across there. That's Trident Edge. Last time I was up here, it was all clagged in, so I couldn't really see where it was going. I was just sort of following the paths. So today, I thought I'd just get out and have a good old look at it. But it is fantastic views all the way around. We're going to go forward. So we're just heading up there. And then that's the summit. And then we'll work our way down to Burke's. The path on the way up to the summit here, it's dead stable. So you see me behind me there. It's just a uh, kind of thing you get all over the lakes. A bit of a rubbly path. But yeah, quite broad, easy to walk on. As you get nearer to the summit, it starts to flatten out a bit, get a little bit rocky, so that's what we're looking at, the very final ascent. Summit says Sunday is just up there. In the distance there is the actual summit. So it does go quite stony at this part, quite flat. Great views out though. Look at that. Oh. So fantastic views all around. That's obviously back towards Seat Sandal there. And back towards Fairfield. This is the final run up now. Whoop. Okay. And there is the summit cairn. Right, let's get over to it. Although I feel like this is actually higher, this bit. <laughs> anyway, I've stood them both. So that's it walking back. Wow. It's a massive view around. You can see right to the edge of the fells there, and it flattens out. Whew. All right then. Bump, there we go, on it. You can see all the way down towards water over there from here. Oh. So what I'm just gonna do from here, we'll bob over there to Gavel Pike and just have a look off that. And then we'll work our way over here and then we'll get to Burke's and start to head down. Uh, we've got the Arneson Crag on the way back as well. So that's kind of a little bit lower down. And then we're back at the pub. All right, so there's our summit in the Wainwright box. And there it is in reality. All's water in the background. So we're at St Sunday's Crag here. This is the Wainwright box. I'm gonna head over to Gavel Pike to have a look off that. And then I'm gonna head back round and work our way back down to Pastel from there. So as you walk down here, all the water just really opens up on that side. That's great, wasn't expecting that. drifting off into my own will today because there's nobody here at all. Uh, so this is Gavel Pike already. This is the end of it. Let's have a look out. That's oh, a great view out. It's 
So all's water region over there. So that's in the book. So you got St. Sunday Crag and then Gavel Pike there. Uh, we're going to then work our way back down to Pathdale. So we're going to head down here really and then get to there. So we'll work from here, go a little bit back, round there to Burks. Uh, I don't want to get down here and go off that way because it's a bit craggy and there's a stream there so it's bound to be boggy down there. So keep a height and then take that path there. We're just heading back to that main path now. And then we can head down to Burks with that view of Ullswater right in front of us. the big hike done really for today. I'm heading down, we're going to go on to Burke's, uh, which is another famous fell in the area. Fluffy on that. I'll make a good coat. St. Sunday's Crag is about uh, 220 metres higher than Burke's over there. So we'll go a little bit further down than that and then we'll climb up there. It's only about 40 metres. At this point, so I've cut, I've been up there and then worked my way across here. And then we're going to join the main path from St. Sunday's Crag up there in a sec, and they'll join together and then we'll walk straight forward. Uh, if you don't want to do Burks, then that's fine, you can just go around this side and that'll take you straight down. main path then and that is up back to St Sunday's Crag up there so over here and then working our way towards Burks there it is a good walk this and I've enjoyed it there's a few uh, bits that take your breath away <laughs> but it's quite a gentle start to it so if you want to get yourself in the mood get in the zone then I would definitely do it this way round. Uh, if you do the other way round then you've just got like a long flat walk at the end with uh, nothing to look forward to. Right we just left the main path here and I'm trying to get over to Burke's but <laughs> it's pretty boggy doesn't matter which way you go it's definitely all boggy. Whoop. Just speed is your friend. Right let's go up here. So that's sort of marshy area there, just as you leave the main path. But we've got to go up here on this grassy little walk and we'll get ourselves to the top of Burks. It's not too far out of the way and good views from the top. Burks is quite a grassy mound, so not really craggy or anything, so quite roundy. There it is going forward. There's several challenges for the top of this. So there we go. But the one we want is a little further on. I'll say there's a couple of things marked to the top on here. And this is one of them. A little dinky pile of stones there. And the other one is just ahead of us there. Both though have a good old view of Old Water. Look at that. We'll get to the other summit now of Burke's. You can see St. Sunday's Crag there behind me. So that's the big one for the day. Uh, this thing takes about sort of five hours or so to do, five and a half hours. So, you know, block out more than half a day for it if you can do it. Just getting to the top now, it's really opening up. So I'll just show it to you. There you go, slightly more impressive pile of stones. Let's get on them. Boom. <laughs> then you're down to the lake there. To complete the walk for this, we're going to carry on going straight forward, uh, just kind of down there. But yeah, great views. Back to St. Sunday Crag there. Right now at this point I've just moved off that main path and I've turned right because I'm going to head down to Arneson Crag. So I'm going to head down here 
I'm aiming for that path on the other side of the wall and then we're off to the back of the pub. You can just about see it down there. The path down here, it is a bit, um, well, it's basically a broken down old wall. So you're just following that down. But it's, you know, it's all right, it's quite gravelly. This drop down is about 70 meters. Uh, it's very easy to miss. So if you've got something like all trails on, um, or ordnance survey, I'll make maps and put them in the description for you so you can just follow them if you want to. But yeah, it's uh, quite a uh, significant down, but it's stable enough, even though it looks like a tiny path. There you go. Nearly down this first steep bit. As I come down here, just hitting the, the V in that valley, <laughs> and there's Old's Water poking up with a very old dead tree in front of it. Right, so we're up here, then we're going to get back. Right, so I'm just heading up. This is the top of Anderson Crag here. There we go. There's the top. Right, so that's where we've come from, up there. Up here, we're going to get down here now. And that's all's water just ahead of us. I'm going to carry on heading down the hill and that'll take us right into the back of the Pathdale Hotel.